Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in their midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. The Gospel of our Lord. Saint Pope John Paul II once said, and I quote, God does not forgive evil, but the individual. And he teaches us to distinguish the evil act, which as such must be condemned from the person who has committed it. So whom he offers the possibility of changing and of the good. Dear good people, we are here today to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. And here we are to experience this Sunday that mercy and compassion of God is available for all of us. And that we need also to share our blessings by forgiving and showing mercy to others who have offended us and gone astray. One of the things that we say every time we talk about forgiveness is that, uh, number one, 
we forgive because we know we are the beneficiaries of forgiveness. That is important. Number two, we forgive because we have been forgiven. What does that mean? It means that even as we have got our gray areas, when we talk about judging others, one of the reasons why we should not judge others, why we should not condemn others, it is majorly one because in each one of us there is some hidden disability. In each one of us there is a certain weakness. And maybe this would be so good if somebody ever came to you because they want you to discuss somebody else. Tell them that that is the weakness of that person. I've got my own weaknesses. I may be worse than that person that you want us to discuss. I have my own inner disability. Reason number two, it is because in every person we see, however graceful their action is, or however evil their path is, there is a story that is not known to us. It is easy to judge. It is easy to condemn and do it very fast. But there is one other path that we are reminded today. There is an area that maybe we do not even know. And because we don't know, we may need to do something. Ours is simple. Forgive and show mercy. Today's readings challenge us to show mercy to the sinners around us and live a life of forgiven people. How many of us would we say that we have never sinned? Yet, quite a good number of us may have gone through what this woman went through. Not because what we did was very bad, but simply because uh, the wickedness of the accusers was sidestepped. And what it is that we did was hyped. Sometimes because maybe the society does not expect us to be that bad. Sometimes we want to hype the sin of others and cover the sins of others. But we have said as a matter of principle that a wrong is a wrong. No matter who has done it, with who, how, and when. It can't be justifiable that uh, when Father CK is on the wrong, we want to close our eyes. But when the pianist here is on the wrong, we want to write everywhere on social media and trumpet it everywhere. It can't be that way. Unfortunately, that is the society we are living in where sins are trumpeted and others are hidden. Look at our government and our government in the world. There's one thread you'll be able to see. The big and the mighty have their sins hidden and covered. The weaklings and the earthlings have their sins trumpeted, punished for it, and others killed. Is it any different in church? Not different. Some of us come to church to judge others. We don't want to admit that somebody is on the wrong because that person is well connected, you know. We don't want to admit that she is on the wrong. Why? Because she is my friend. We don't want to admit that 
he is on the wrong. Why? Because he belongs to our clan. Did you know? I would have said in Africa. Let me not say in Africa. Let me be home here. Did you know in this country, Kenya, our beautiful country, there are some communities in this country when you kill an outsider, that is heroism. But when you kill a tribesman from your own tribe, you need even to be cleansed for you to be accepted back in this country. Out there. Maybe you went for catharastering, for example, or just some, some, some sinful and evil things. In the process, you killed one of your own. When you kill one of your own, there is sin. But when you kill others, there is nothing. We have had in Africa where some people were being referred to as cockroaches. Cockroaches in this Africa. That person is a cockroach because he or she does not share my mother tongue. That man is worth killing because he is not my tribesman. That woman is worth being persecuted because we do not share blood, we do not share even the color. And those stories, we have heard them. Listen to what happens in Europe. We even have people we call men and women of color. Do they face the same justice? Today I can assure you, as a man who has traveled, that the answer is no. If you go to Europe, those of you who have been, been there, if a sin is committed by a black person, and the same sin committed by a white person, the judgment is different. The black one may, is, so, is so likely to be dragged to the judge for jailing, if not shot dead. While the white person may be given some white judgment. We may want to condemn them. And he's asking a right for the blacks. There is no difference between a black man being killed by a white person there and then we keep our eyes closed. And when you kill from another tribe, and you, you cannot be asked, because the other tribe, we have cockroaches. It is your tribe that has human beings. Have we not seen that in our politics in this country? We have. Because she does not believe what I believe, I take a stone, I hate her. He does not belong to my political formation. I take a stone. I, he, I hate him or her. We loot. We malign the names of people. We do all manner of things because they do not belong to us. The concept of them versus we has killed the human touch and spirit in us. Today, we are being told that there is justice that will be called a mercy. Each one of us, at one point, we may have messed. When we know that, we cannot just be dragging people for killing or maybe maligning other people's names because of this or the other one. There are a few things that we learn from this story something that we can remind ourselves. Because as we said, we do not read any of the biblical stories as a story belonging to them. Every biblical story that we read, it is ours. We are the biblical community of today. We must identify amongst us the Pharisees, and the scribes, the men and the women who pass cold judgment to those others who may have nobody to speak on their behalf. 
Today, we must identify those adulterous women, in parentheses, who may have been presented for death. And there, we take our first lesson home. The society and yourself may say that someone is meant for death, but Jesus is saying otherwise. Some of you may have been condemned because of your color, because of your religion, because of your political belief, because of your tribe, because of status, social status, because of, mention them. When we condemn and ostracize you, Jesus is saying, no, this is my daughter. This is my son. In any one of you who have not sinned, be the first one to throw a stone. If you have been presented for death, please don't settle for death. There is Jesus who is saying that uh, you deserve to live. The judgment was clear, and, and it's written here. She has been caught. They even quote the Torah. Moses said that we stone such. So what do you want to say? They have come with a clear-cut judgment. And that is how some of us will be presented for our own for death. Please don't listen to the crowd. The crowd will be for your blood. In fact, one of the lessons that we'll be learning on Palm Sunday is that the same crowd that cheered you, the same crowd that um, sang for you, the same crowd that danced for you, will you stand in broad daylight and say, crucify him? We have brought her for stoning, kill her. The same. The same. But we need to ask, who are we listening to? The crowd or the father? Jesus says, you are not meant for death. You are meant for life. Even those of you, for whatever reason, you may have been presented for sacking. Somebody has presented you a letter for sacking. It is that person who believes that according to the law of Moses, the sin she has committed, the misdemeanor that he has committed, deserves him to be fired. When you are in that kind of a situation, always ask Jesus, Dear Master, this is what they have said. What are you saying? I want to listen to you. Word number two. And I think this could be the central of, this, of today's uh, message. There is nobody who can be converted by stoning. We don't convert through stoning. And we need to understand our modern day stoning we may not Jewish the Jewish style, literally stoning and killing. Our stoning is different. Our stoning would be to go to all the social media, good social media, and parade your sins. We parade you there. He did this, he did this, and we make it tread. That is the social media stoning. The other form of stoning is gossiping, making sure that her sins have been talked over to everybody in this village. Everybody in this village will know that Mama so and so, they have a relationship with Mr. so and so. We want everybody to know. We want even children to know. That is called social stoning. Stoning. To the extent that even when we come to this church, people are murmuring, she has come. 
You see, she is even sitting in the same side with him. Ha! That is us. That is called social stoning. And we are stoning our men and our women right even in our churches. Dani Kabisa. We are stoning them. We talk about everything. If I come to this church and uh, for whatever reason, whatever reason, uh, come, come. Come, you, 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 come, come, come. I have come here for the first time. Me, I have never been here. Eh? Of course, this is true. Even I, even I got lost. <laughs> so if I come eh, and uh, I, I greet her, then you find me up in some tree. You find us outside here with this lady. We are talking. She belongs to this church. Me, I'm, I have just come. Uh, but I'm asking her, hey, how is this place? Uh, when, when, when are they coming? Uh, when they come, you, then you let me know. And then the same stone masters you see, ah, now she is stealing the father. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Father CK is being stolen. So <laughs> and now the story changes. Did you see? Did you see? Every priest who comes, she must run to greet. And it is me who called her. I called her because I got lost. In fact, today I got lost twice. So you can imagine, you can imagine if I, I am asking the way, and you in your evil mind, you are thinking of other things. That is how we stone our people. Stoning is not just taking a stone and throwing. We have stoned so many of our women, we have stoned so many of our men to the extent that we have not even given them a chance to divide themselves. Dear good people, you cannot convert anybody by parading them on social media sending their names on social media, their photos on social media, writing on WhatsApp and uh, messages and in Facebook and Twitter and everywhere. That is not the way to convert. You don't convert that way. You do not convert by spreading rumors in the estates and villages. And some of us have those cheap brains. We think that by maligning his name, uh, we'll have cut him to size. By maligning her name, we cut her to size. That is how evil some of us are. And this evil is even in our churches, seated. We pretend that we are praising God. But we are just waiting for the, ne for the next moment we go and continue with our, with, our, with, our, with our gossips. We come for mass holding our script. We hide it. We want mass to add. We continue stoning our men and women. And we come even here. We come. We find us here coming for communion. And we come for communion and in the so pious way. You may never think that our hands has never ever touched a stone. But we have a stone and we are coming to receive you find us receiving, like that. you might think that we are the ones who cooked. <laughs> you may think that our work is to cook sacraments. And the way we are receiving, it is like Jesus already is on our back, calling our names. The same tongue that we are receiving Jesus with is the same tongue that is being used for stoning. Good people, what is wrong with us? That we are in church and we are still stoning each other. Today I came as your priest and servant to remind you that you cannot convert anybody by stoning. Remember what we said last time, or last Sunday. Even when your son has gone so wrong, the world will present to you your son for stoning. And they'll tell you, your son is a thief. Woe unto you the day you wake up and call him a thief. Your son is done. Because the only hope your son had is my mom. And that is why those of you who may have given birth to thieves, have you ever seen a thief who was being chased and went to the neighbor unless they were almost being pursued? 
a thief runs to the mother, mostly, because the father could also be part of the pursuers. <laughs> Sometimes not always. But a thief will run home and go and hide there. And the mother is being beaten. Where is, you, where is, this, you, you, you are, where is this thief? The mother says, here I have my son. If he has wronged you, please take him and don't kill him. But the day you call your son a thief, the way we are calling him, you have joined us in stoning him. You have for sure. The day you will condemn your daughter, the way we are condemning her out here, it is the day you have joined us in stoning her. Your husband may be a bad man, for goodness sake. But remember, it is you and him who are married. And when you are dating, you never called us to come and listen to the sweet nothings that you are telling each other. <laughs> right now, you won't tell us that your husband is hopeless. We can't help you. What you are doing, of course some of us may have seen that he is, but because he is a son of God, we are praying for him. Can you imagine? For us, we are praying for your husband to convert. You, in your small brain, you are parading him all over. Even telling your children the way your husband is an NGO and you is nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> telling them, you know, uh, your dad is like that. Dear, dear gracious moms, the day you will join us in condemning your husband, please know that that is the day you are joining us in stoning him. Dear men, I have said this a million times. If you want to see how your wisdom is, look at your wife. Your wife is a physical representation of your wisdom. So if you think that your wife is a fool, a fool is picked by a fool. If you think that your wife never grows up, ako na utoto mwigi, mtoto hutafutwa na mtoto. Utoto wako ndio ulikufanya ukapata mtoto mkaoana mkazaa watoto wawili wakazaa watoto. Give us a break. <laughs> Don't tell us that your wife is bad because maybe some of us already have seen it and again we are praying for her. Because we love her, and we love you, and we love your marriage. You, in your foolishness, you tell everybody how your wife is useless. How your wife is, is a fool. How your wife cannot do this or the other one. Even telling your own sons and daughters. Dear brothers, the lowest you can go as a man, and please, the men who are married, and they are alive today. Listen to this. The lowest you can go as a man is the day you gather your children, all of them all one, to tell them how bad their mother is. That is the lowest you can go. In fact, it will be better you are never born. Because of what you are doing is gradually destroying your daughter, you are destroying your son, while already you have reached your age. If you are 50 years and your daughter is 13 years, your daughter has never been 50 years. You, you have been 13. And you know how stupid some 13s can be. You are not married to your daughter. You are married to your wife, who is her mother. And you never know how they did it. Maybe she also know, she already knows that you are a goat. And the mother told, you, she told her that she, you are a goat. Only that uh, he, she is keeping quiet. So the day you call her and tell her how her mother is useless, she confirms. Allah. So it is true. It is true. Dear men, if you ever want to be called a man worth your name, the best place to go and report your wife it is here, at the altar where you brought her for the day of your wedding. The society there, the society is qualified by, for stoning. The society's work is to stone. 
Never join the society to stone your own husband. Never join the society to, 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 to stone your own wife. At what point would you pick your daughter as a married woman, a daughter who is 15 years, to tell her how bad her dad is? She has never had any other dad. And maybe before you married her dad, you had other seven men. Even in heaven it is known. <laughs> and the, all, the reason why all of them went and never married you is because they were not as tolerant as your husband is. All of them left you because they realized that your head and that of a rabbit, they have uh, some separance. But your husband has always been with you. She, he knows that my, my wife is a great woman. Only that maybe she gets angry very fast. Or only that her tongue seems like one that has been borrowed from the devil's archive. She uses it sometimes. <laughs> but your husband has related you. And this is the man you are maligning his name to everyone. We all have our weaknesses for goodness sake. And if we were to use our weaknesses to stone others, nani atabaki? We will all be killed. We will all be killed. Please, those of you holding your stones on social media, put them down. Those of you holding your stones using your tongue, please put them down. Please do. Those of you who came to church holding the stones, bring them here, I, I pray for you. It is not possible that we, we continue doing that. But this, this message needs to go deep in our systems. We cannot convert anybody. We cannot convert anybody by stoning them. Even when you want to correct your children, do you correct them by always shouting at them and, and whipping them? No. As a modern parent, you sit down and tell your son, this path you have taken, it is a wrong path. Even if you will spank that child later, you have shown them what they have done. We correct them as human beings because we have got the imprint of God in our systems. We cannot behave like the heathens. We can't. We cannot. Please put down your stones. Please. Today we must, we must tell God we are putting down our stones to allow justice and mercy prevail. Human nature sometimes tend to love sin and hate the sinner. Do not be that. And we say that only the soul that is actually transformed by the grace of Christ will be able to treat the sinner as Christ did. Take the position of Christ every time you are presented with a sinful person and then say, what would have Jesus done if he was called and told, your daughter is a thief, your son is a thief, your husband is this or the other one, your wife is this or the other one, how do we react? We react the way Christ did. Now, this story is exposing what we call the sin of self-righteousness. I don't know whether you have met people whose duty on earth is to look for the sins of others. We call them scadomogas. In church, we call them church prefects. They are the ones who knows how you should dress, how you should walk around, who you should greet, and for how long. And they are the ones who knows in every small Christian community. They know everything. They know all the scenes of those places. And they know how people should behave. Ask them in any village. If you, if you see a pregnant woman, ask them, who is the father? They know. <laughs> they even know what killed their ancestors. They are there. They are the ones who are judging our young people. That's why they are running away from church. Because these young people have been judged by the society. And then they come to church and they fight those prefects. 
Our young people are judged. Then you tell them, don't walk like that. Don't. There are so many don'ts, so much so that even our young people are thinking that our God is such a punitive God. He's a God who punishes people. He's a God who hates young people. He's a God who hates this or the other one. We have got so many don'ts. Let us assume there is a don't. There is a way of communicating your don't. There must be that loving, loving kindness. It must be there. A story is told of a girl who ran away from home. From her mother. She didn't have a dad. But she was a delinquent, for lack of a better word. Completely. A complete lost child. So she went out there and she lived in a very bad way. Very bad. Extremely so. In the hog pen experience, she decided to go home. And when she went home, the mother was happy that she is home. At least she is home. And for the first time in many years, she woke up and told the mother, I am going to church. Remember, she is coming from the hog pen. Alikuwa ametoka kwa guruwe. In the hog pen, people don't dress properly. Remember, when the prodigal son came home, the first thing that Jesus, uh, the father said, give him robe, give him the ring, and give him the shoes, the saddles if you like. What does that tell you? This man was not properly attired. The hog pen has a dress code. So this girl comes from the hog pen, and there's a dress code. The dress code for the hog pen for girls is an outfit that starts very late and ends very early. <laughs> That's her outfit, and she is okay. You may look at her and then you feel embarrassed. Whatever she is wearing is not on your body. It is on her body, and she is okay. So this girl, remember she is, where she is coming from. Remember her story. Remember the joy of the mother. And the girl goes to church. Only to go and find two church prefects. And dictated how she should, she should dress. And told her, the way you are dressed, you might kill our priest. I, think, I, I don't know what that meant. So the girl felt judged. The girl felt condemned. And the girl felt ostracized. She left. She didn't go to church. But her mother prevailed upon her later, not that Sunday. That Sunday she did not. She was so angry that God can judge a sinner who is coming back for reconciliation. This is a young woman who had completely ran away from home, from God, from the church. Everybody was happy to see her, apart from the two prefects. Who are, the, who are in charge of how people dress, how they yawn, how they love, how they greet each other. You go and hug somebody, the hug takes long. Now, the story starts. The way I, 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 saw, I, I saw him hugging her, she was, he was squeezing her as if he was resurrecting her. Allah. So you even know how people should be hugged. You have even your own way of hugging, how the people should, should shake hands, all those things, dear good people. The sin of self-righteousness is worse than any other sin because this is what we call an exclusionist, an exclusionist sin, the sin that excludes others. You don't belong here. In the choir, we don't do that. In this, we don't do that. Haven't you heard stories whereby a gracious lady goes to the, to the small Christian community and then times for introduction because she is new, beautifully new and beautifully young. She introduces herself. I am Mama Joshua. 
uh, I come from this place and I, I transferred from my work, so I'm here. I'm joining this, 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 uh, this church and this small Christian community. And then she adds the punchline. I am a single mother of one beautiful son. Allah. <laughs> now church prefects are up in arms. Now she starts being accused that she is stealing husbands. Now she, she is made to feel uncomfortable, out of place, and some of them have even left the church because they were accused. You cannot belong to this small Christian community uh, when you are a single mother and the way you are beautiful. Our husband will be thrown by you. Now, surely. What, why would we get to that point where we exclude others? And the ones who are excluding her, they have their own misdemeanors. They have their own shortcomings. All of us have our own shortcomings. We cannot just be looking at others and then self-righteously saying that, no, you don't belong, you don't belong. And fight the reasons why church associations fight. Part of it is this sin of self-righteousness. We, have, we even have them versus we. Them versus we. That the married women will treat single women suspiciously. That this tribe will treat this tribe suspiciously. In church. In church. Very sad. Today we have learned our lesson number five that Jesus is the one who gives dignity. Remember, Jesus calls this lady, the, the, the address woman, he calls her woman. The exact term he used to call Mother Mary. From the villagers address woman to Jesus a woman. She has a dignity. She has been given a name. She has been elevated. Dear good people, it doesn't matter what you have done. There is Christ who gives dignity. There is Christ who restores dignity. The same Jesus who will lift your condemnation. Let us run to him. Let us run to him. Remember, when all is said and done, you be left with Jesus. Not with the others. Because when it has been known and the sins have been uncovered, when we will say, he who have never sinned, be the first one to throw the stone. What happens? We are told. They went away one by one, starting from the old men. Eventually, the woman is left alone with Jesus. That is how it will be at the end of time. It will only be you and Jesus. He who never condemned you. The one who never ostracized you. The one who lifted your condemnation. And the one who gave you dignity. Dear good people, let us focus our eyes on Jesus. At least we know. Where Jesus is, there is no condemnation. Where Jesus is, stones are never thrown. And where Jesus is, we are given dignity. And here we'll be told that it doesn't matter how sinful you are. As long as you go to him, your sins will be forgiven. Our sins, however grave, None that cannot be forgiven. How I wish and pray that we can extend the same to our brothers and sisters. When we are wronged, because we will be wronged a million times, we must get to a point where we say, now I cannot focus on this darkness. I have got light to pay attention to. Because many a times we become a people who want to look at the, the darkness and then we, uh, we say, you see, here there was a cuddle that is supposed to be 
uh, working. Now it's not working. Now uh, it is just here. So I want to focus on this. It's not there. Nothing is working here. Everything is bad. Uh, so I want to talk about this cardo. Who was using this? Who was supposed to bring this here? This is the darkness that we are paying attention to. Look at this. This is put down here. That is where stone throwers stay. But the one that is lit is on the altar. It has been elevated. That is how Jesus will elevate you. He will pick you up from the stone throwers and place you here and give you dignity, restore your name, and of course bring you back home. And he will tell you, my daughter, I have not condemned you. Please don't condemn yourself. My son, I have not condemned you. Please don't condemn yourself. I know some of you may have sinned and you may be feeling a bit unworthy. I know there are some people who may be even at home. They can't go to church because they feel unworthy. Dear good people, none of you, none of you is unworthy before God. And none of you will ever be unworthy before God. Please let us run to him. On Saturday we were told, he is our running father. Let us run to him. He is running towards us. Let's go for forgiveness. Let us embrace the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us go there. We cannot hide any longer. Already we have been assured, sons and daughters, you are quite loved the way you are. And because of how much he loved you, he doesn't want you to live like that. He wants to give you the dignity that we have robbed you. He wants to come and bite your wounds where we stoned you. Please come to Christ. Come back to church. Those of you who are at home, because of whoever, whatever happened, whoever injured you, maybe your priest or your pastor injured you, come back to Christ. Maybe the member of choir injured you, please come back to Christ. The member of your group may have injured you, come back to Christ. Maybe you have injured yourself and you feel unworthy, please come back to Christ. As you come, you can be sure that you'll be loved, you'll be received, and your dignity will be restored. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.